for our field trip, we have choose Sydney as our destination. Approximately, it only takes 8 hours and 16 minutes by flight. Let's enjoy our field trip together! Finally, we are here! Oh my god! Oh my god! Look at that! Guys, do you know that this is the Sydney Harbour Bridge and it is the world largest steel arch bridge. So, uh, local people here say that in 1932, to test the load capacity of the bridge, uh, 96 steam locomotives were positioned in various ways. Cool, right? Cool. So, and you guys know that the top of the arch, which is we can see at the top of the uh, the Sydney Harbour Bridge, it will rise and fall uh, due to the temperature and weather of the Sydney. Wow. Hey guys, that one is Sydney Opera House. Fun facts about Sydney Opera House, which is there is a competition in 1956 whereby all architects submit their design. And you and you guys know how much design that they receive? No. To Okay. 233 design were submitted during the competition. Wait, really? Yes, and then uh, the winner is a guy from Denmark and he only received £5,000 at that time. Wow. £5,000? Yeah. By the way, you guys know how much time does it take to build this opera, Sydney Opera House? Um, actually, it was expected to be done by 4 years But in reality, they only managed to have 14 years only So guys, as you know, we're now in the Sydney Harbour area The Sydney Harbour is the world's deepest and largest natural harbour Which is more than 17 kilometers long and up to 45 meters deep and I think it's one of the most beautiful natural harbours in the world with the likes of Kaipara Harbour of New Zealand or the Halifax Harbour of Nova Scotia in Canada among others. Now, if you guys have noticed, we are in the Circular Quay and it is a harbour that was formerly a working port which now serves as the International Passenger Shipping Port and is a popular tourism spot. If you guys noticed, there are numbers of ferries that are available for cruises to Sydney Harbour throughout the day. On one side of the circular quay are Sydney's Museum of Contemporary Art as well as Historic Customs House, while landmarks such as the Sydney Opera House and Sydney Harbour Bridge are on this side. Guys, guys, look! That is the St. Mary's Cathedral. I think I have read about this one. Look at the structure. The structure has 106 meter long sandstone Gothic revival style and it is work of architect William Wardle. The build of the cathedral was begun in 1868, consecrated in 1905 and substantially finished in 1928. That's because those 75 meter spires were not added until year 2000. You guys want to know what is the interesting part of this cathedral? The crypt has bishop tombs and an impressive cross shaped terrazzo mosaic floor depicting the Christian, inspired by the Celtic style illuminations of the Book of Kells. And guess what? It took 15 years to complete it. Guys, look, under architecture of the building awesome, I think this is the exchange or the Darling Square. You guys know what? 
Darling Square is a new public domain on the former site of Sydney's Entertainment Centre. The exchange, a spiraling light field hype designed by the world-renowned Japanese architecture firm Kengo Kuma and Associates, who are bringing their signature design aesthetic to Australia for the first time. The exchange of the Darling Square is envisioned as the newest Sydney architectural icon and an innovative hub within the city. Guys, neighboring with the exchange of Darling Square, where only takes 7 minutes from it, Darling Harbour is a harbour adjacent to the city centre of Sydney. Do you know what? Darling Harbour is a name after Lieutenant General Ralph Darling, who was Governor of the New South Wales from 1825 to 1831. Darling Harbour is a modern leisure area on the waterfront to the west of the city. It was developed in 1980s from a previous Dockland region. There are plenty of shops within the wonderful Harbour site shopping complex with the restaurant lining the beautiful water's edge. This is an ideal place to last the day away, right? Look here guys, you see a sculpture, right? This is the Sydney Sculpture Walk that was a major city of Sydney initiative for the 2000 Olympics. And did you know how long is the sculpture walk is? Well, the Sydney Sculpture Walk has a sculpture all the way the city from the Domain and Royal Botanic Gardens through East Secular Quay and the city streets to Martin Place. So, it has four cities uh, all the way that has a sculpture in it. Each of the artwork also has their own history and personality. But, for some reason, Sydney Sculpture Walk are not as popular as it is and now people become more attracted with mural where the mural are being created by local citizen all the way Sculpture Walk. It's, it's pretty right? So guys, we are going to the other side right? Now let's get on the permanent bridge. Now the Permanent Bridge is the largest heritage listed swing span bridge in the world that connects the west and east side of Darling Harbour and as you can see there are many restaurants as well as hotels as part of its tourism attractions. As for locals, they love coming here to engage in healthy physical activities as well as sightseeing. I personally love coming here for its refreshing air and for the view. I think the view is amazing. We are here guys, the Luna Park Sydney. The Luna Park Sydney is a heritage list amusement park located at One Olympic Drive and the park is owned by the Luna Park Reserve Trust, an agency of the Government of New South Wales. This amusement park are called Heritage because it was built in 1935, is it cool right? And as you can see, at the entrance, there is a Luna smiling face. The resident artist at the park for a long time was the legendary Arthur Art Barton, who is in the 1950s. Uh, he created the face synonymous with the Luna Park entrance. Uh, and the face uh, refer to the old King Cole. And as you can see, this is why the amusement park are still alive and still become attractive to the citizen because uh, it have their own historical value. Hey guys, look at that Paris. Do you guys know that the Paris is a mainstay of the Sydney public transport landscape and it is the best way to explore the harbour. 
By the way, they said the ferry is an easy alternative to ramp packet tours. And guess what? The prices are affordable and the routes fan out in multiple directions from the main hub of Circular Kai to west up the Parabata River, north to Manly and far east uh, Watson Bay. And lastly, we can take so many pictures through these scenic trips. <laughs>